Hey guys, Kodak Harness here. Welcome back to the bench. Uh, an interesting one today. We've got a bit of a 3D project. Oh, so, um, got traffic lights. So this is what kit I got. Um, it came in. Uh, was it? Yeah, it basically just came in back. Uh, there was a bit at the top. I can't remember where that's gone, but comes from J Car again. Um, so. You can download the guide, but hey, who needs that? I'll figure it out. Um, list of component, oh, list of components, which is fair enough. And basically, how it all plugs together. Well, what the different components are, but never mind. Right, ignoring that. Hey, who needs instructions, eh? It comes with mm, what's that? Yeah, CD4017BE chip in socket which is nice um, if you've seen my last video you'll see that I've talked about this this chip here it's an interesting one I'll just bring up his data sheet oh. uh, no 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 there it is it's oh no I need to hit the control uh, zoom 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 come on there we go so it's a board it's a counter it's basically um Oh, you can't see my mouse pointer. Oh, great. <coughs> Excuse me. You have a clock here on pin 14, so I'll just zoom in a bit so you can actually see the diagram. Every time we clock it, the high point starts at zero, then moves to one, two, three, four, five. So one of these is um, high at any one time. Then when it gets down to the bottom, it lo loops back to the top, and the carry out is used if you want to do more digits. Uh, clock in, clock inhibits, so if that's high, clocking it won't do anything and if you hold reset high everything goes back down to just zero being high um, so as long as you hold clock inhibit and reset low every time you pulse clock your output will move one pin along uh, very very easy way to actually have something which has 10 different states <coughs> oh, excuse me <coughs> this one's an interesting one so look at the top of the circuit board there's, oh, right up to there, that's better. Right, you've got a series of LEDs. So funny enough, red, yellow, green, facing that way, that way, up and down. So I have to solder on both sides. So that's your, that's your traffic light bit. You've got your six here, because you've got one, two, three, and then your two directions. So that's your six combinations of LEDs. And then you have the logic board down here. So if we just, consider from this part up at the moment go through funny enough it's right so you have um g1 y1 and red one are the reds green yellow and reds pointing let's just say sideways and then green two yellow two red two your up and downs so the basic signals come in go through a resistor two leds in series then spits it out, so that's your positive and your negative, negative rail, zero rail. 100 ohm resistor just to provide some current limiting. Um, so yeah, so the top of that board is actually fairly simple. There's not much to actually figure out on that bit. The more interesting bit, this bit, is unlike the last chip, uh, last um, circuit I made, this doesn't have a 555 on it. This just has the, the, the you know, decade chip. And it's got 21 diodes scattered around here. So, what did I do? Well, I started off with, and I'll cover this up so there's no su bit of surprises, but I went through and figured out which diode here, if you have a look at the tracks, diodes, connections to diodes go all the way up here and connect to the signal pins. So, the diodes sit here, firing voltage into there. They'll find current into there. So you go through and you figure out what diodes are. And if you have a look, green one is connected to diodes 10, 12, and 18. So there's yeah, 10 there. Yeah, where's 12? 12, 18. So it's connected to those three diodes. So you pass current into any one of those diodes, and the LEDs will light. Yellows have one diode each, and red has six. So you then go through, and I then went through the decade counter. Yep, move it up a bit. But 
There you go. So on the 4017, these, this is digit 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so you know, 0 is connected to 1 and 6. 1 is connected to, so each state is connected to two diodes. And yeah, oh, that's interesting. So when you go through and figure out, well, if in state 0, these two are high, so 1 and 6, well, 1 is red and 6 is a green. You go through and you come up with this pattern. So the first one, you have red on red one way, green on the net, green going that way. Next state, it's the same. Next state's the same. Next state, this one goes from green to yellow. Next state, both red. That one goes green, 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 yellow, red. Then green, 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 yellow, red, green. Green, 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 yellow, red. So yeah. Now of course this is the Australian, because I'm in Australia, this is using the Australian sequencing uh, in the uk they've got a slightly different one where it, just before it goes to red it goes green orange sits there for a minute then goes red and then the other way sorry that's not all. the other way around is before it goes green it drops back down to orange for a second then goes green so you have a slight warning it's time to go almost a racing start type thing not that i condone speeding so I then sat down and started trying to figure out what the heck this part of the circuit was. So here are the diodes. Well, that was easy to figure out because we've done that. There's all the connections up there to the LEDs. Don't need to worry about them. There's your 714017 chip. Well, most of the connections, the only one we're connect, interested in realistically is this yellow one here, which is the clock pin. So what is triggering this? So I went through and okay, so the red is the positive. Your black, which is a bit hard to see on here, is your, is your negative rail. And I've got a capacitor here. Okay, so it's a capacitor. The one here, a transistor here, and a transistor here. That transistor is being driven by the green rail to turn on and off the clock. So, right. So, this part is nothing more than a clock driving software, so we can ignore that bit. So, we went through. Well, I've got a transistor here and a transistor here. And... Funny enough, if you move stuff around, you come up with, there you go, a standard, if you ignore the red part, that is your standard transistor transistor oscillator. So this one will turn on, which will then discharge that capacitor, which will then turn discharge that one up and vice versa. And, and this will just oscillate one between the two, turning on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, with the speed controlled by these um, Transistors, which are all the same. One, two, three, four are all 2.2K. The only difference is this one here has a variable resistor in it, which allows you to slow down this one's clicking, or the charging and discharging rate of this one. So by twisting the knob here, you can actually change the, the frequency. This side will always trigger the same because there's nothing variable here. This one here, It'll let you trigger it. And then this one here, when it turns on and off, it triggers the clock pulse. We've got to pull up resistor, uh, pull down resistor here. So it'll just, every so often this will turn on, pull it up and enable. So yeah, it's just a transistor and this logic. I suggest you having a look online for this diet, the circuit. It's one of the fundamental transistor circuits you can make. Um, and there are people out there who explain how this works a lot better than me. So have a look. I might see if I can find one, but yeah. So this oscillator is just sits here running away, pulsing away, triggering the clock. The clock then sits there and ripples backwards and forwards, turning on a combination of diodes, which then turn on the LEDs. So it is literally a state machine. Um, if you wrote this in code, you'd, you'd have pretty much a, in this state, turn these lights on, in this state, turn this light on, and just have something which just iterates through the states. If you writing simple code so so this sort of one is hot what i've already done is i've already gone through i don't want to sit and bend transistors uh bend these leds i've pre-bent some leds just so they're all set up and yeah so this kit's interesting because you have Ignoring the battery case, you have your variable 
resistor with a nice little handle so you can twist it backwards and forwards switch a couple of screws and here we go you gotta be careful because you've got three different transistors two of them are identical so that one is your 557 that's your 547 and that's a 547 so those are your two npn and that's a pnp transistor switch some caps some of the shredded clips some staple hundreds of diodes 21 to be precise and your resistors so yeah so what do you reckon we tackle first i think we should tackle the huge numbers of diodes if you ever have a look yeah, the die's got a little glass, fairly little glass thing with a black line on it. So the black line matches. Yeah, there it is. You can see that little black line on the die. So all the black lines should line up down this side and across the bottom of the board. Let's see. I think it's one of those. Let's see what this is like. The right size. Did he do? Oh, oh, come on. Ah. How's that fit? That fits pretty good to me. Get it out. No. Give me for a minute and I'll just do the next. Few minutes of lead forming. Stick them in. Get all the resistors and diodes done. Oh, give me you, thank you. So, yeah. This one was an interesting one to figure out. The diodes as a state machine is not, not a design I've come across much before in the past. Um, and of course, the minute you see it, you kind of go, oh, that's obviously the best way of doing it, or a way of doing it. Um, it does mean you have state chart fully fixed, and these days, the modern ones will use um, controllers. And, actually, they must do, because your um, the cycle time in modern systems actually uh, vary. So you can actually get it... Um, to change the cycles based on traffic and stuff like that with lots of sensors running around so you know, I, was at, I was at university many many years ago we were told a story of um i don't remember which american city it was actually um started using neural networks instead of trying to teach a neural network how traffic worked we got it to try and optimize the flow of traffic by changing the times and cycle patterns of um, your uh, traffic lights. Uh, yeah, they had some interesting, from what I understand, from what I remember, this was yeah, pretty out well before AI is taken off the way it is now. Um, yeah, there's lots of... Uh, Interesting results. We meant to actually give us like a 10 or 15% speed up of traffic. Or no, that was it. It was a 50% speed up in the average commute time. But the problem was the average commute time for half the population was really fast. And the commute time for the other half was really, really slow. So on average, yeah, it wasn't too bad. And what it was doing was prioritizing, I think it was north-south traffic. So if you're traveling north and south in the American cities, because you know how a lot of them are supposed to like grids, um, you were fine. You got to work nice and quick. If you were a east-west person, yeah, your commute time sucked. And of course, that would never fly. So I don't think that program ever went much further, but... Yeah. It 
It's an interesting thought experiment anyway, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, neural networks and... The whole AI was well and truly in their infancy when I, when I was studying it. So... Uh, there we go, D5. One more D. There we go, D13. So that's all your diodes in. Make sure everything is pointing the right way, blackwise. Yep, 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 yep. Right, what do we got here? Uh, black. Single black. Well, that should be my zero ohm link. Where did I put that? That is my link is R5. R5. Mm. What do you reckon? That one, I think. Nope, this one back. The world's most useless resistor, zero ohm. What we got here? Yeah, brown, black, orange. Brown, black, orange is 10k. So where my 10k resistors go? R12 to 14. And with R12 there. Let's see, put gold at the bottom. Oh, they've been very generous with their holes on this one. 12. Oh. And 13. Oh, okay. 13. And R14. There we go. Go to the bottom, go to the bottom, that's fine. Over. Really thin leads and leads. And yeah, what are these? Uh, what is that red, red, black, brown, brown, is it? Or is it brown, brown, black, red, brown? I don't know what it should be. Yeah. Uh, Red, 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 gold. What's these ones? Not really good at reading the five ones. Four ones, not a problem. These are brown, brown, black, brown. So these are our 100 ohm resistors. So these ones would be these ones up top. Remember those. So they must be my 2.2k. I'm going to have a look at those numbers. Oh. Yeah. Ratings. Not ratings, but then markings. But, uh, yeah. I grew up with these uh, four band resistors. And so these five band. No, not new. Been around for ages, but just not one I've really got used to reading. As I said in my last video, I'm planning on getting into the SMD stuff, so just saving up to try and get a microscope basically, because all the stuff I'm looking at is really tiny, absolutely teeny weeny. All right, lots to solder on this one so far. Uh, one more. Then we should have. Alright, so these are meant, meant to be 2.2k. And according to the chart, these are red, 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 gold. They're not red, 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 gold. One, two, three, four of them. Right. Because, oh, I suppose that could be red. 
red, red, black, brown. That would make sense. So that's two, two, zero, one. Yeah. Red, red, brown, black. Sorry. Red, red, black, brown, brown, maybe? No. I need to get out my fire resistor chart. I've only got a four one here was in front of me. Yeah. That one goes there. Let's see, there you go. Let's see, red is the significant digit, so I'll put that to the left. I mean, if I was paranoid, I'd actually check these with a the resistance meter, but nah. Laziness is winning. Too hot, it's 22 or 26 degrees inside or something like that. Right, so what I should have left is a couple of caps, transistors, and a buttload of. Right, can I? Yeah. Right. Excuse me while I go on a soldering vessel to my soldering bit from. Hopefully that's not picking up. Probably gonna make my voice go a bit rough funny. I know this last recording it went a bit weird with the fan on it. But um Hmm. I think it could be a fun one if it works. Something for the kids to play with. Yeah, and there are uh, model cars running around. The traffic lights have to obey. Pick it up the Arduino or something so I can actually control it and put a block on it. Green. It was just driven past with face speakers blaring. I don't know why you'd have that. Ah. Uh, I'm just a mood. It's one of these big holes they take. Lots of room for the solder just to flow down and miss. And it gives a bad joint. No, it seems to be flowing right at the moment. Nice board, no tarnish. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's, it's all flow down the hole. Yeah. No problem. The solder gets sucked down into the hole, and we end up with a. Uh, you know, it looks like a wire. V, I suppose, depending on where well, you come from. I'm sorry, that one. Oh. Uh, no, not too bad, placement wise. Mm -hmm. 
staff. No, let's have a look. That looks all right to me. All those sort of joints and loop knees and that. Right. Half leads off. Where would have been the cutter? Yeah, if I was a cutter, we would have been. Yeah, it would be. Nice shot, that's his old. Very useful. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting middle of the screen soon. This would be basically the state circuit side sorted. That's all the diodes. And this one I'm actually looking forward to seeing it work. Obviously, might could be a bit of fun. I was struggling, was that? Uh, Baker the other day, and oh, the circuits really would all the kits that were jumping out at me. They were, um, and like water level detectors and stuff like that, which, yeah, I prefer something with some LEDs or some noises or something. But I may get one and just see how it works. Maybe capacitive or possibly even just a uh, means of current leak, I suppose. You know what current is leaking between these two points? The more conductive the soil, the more leaky, I suppose. Crude way of doing it, but it works. And the ones I've got here in the spare part bins all uh, capacitive. So they use uh, water as a capacitor and dielectric between the two, um, between the two plates. And you know, the higher the water level, the more, more or less. I don't know if you sit there and figure it out, would be more or less. Those dielectric constant of water is going to be a lot less than that of air. It is a relatively good insulator. You throw your bolt to tie up and it breaks down, you get a lightning bolt. But, you know, can't really complain about it at that point. Most things would break down at lightning point volts. Lightning bolt. Lightning bolt voltages. Okay. That one done. Let's trim that one off.
Let's have a look at the next joints. They look reasonable. And that's all the resistors populated. So what's the next I want there? Well, okay, so this is a five four seven. Five four seven according to that list, it is a T1 or T2. Stick it into the T1. Five four seven, so that must be T two. Right, so I want help. Do thing. There we go. Thank you very much. Now five five seven. Fifty three. So those two are the oscillator, they're switching the flip on and off. That's what we got. And this one is a 50 volt 47. It's a 47 microphone. It turns out C3. It ends up there. Oops. Negative. And that's the one. That's a dominates you heard it then uh, hundred euro it's a c5 c5 is there the variety light and then there it is oh the screen so i'm not it and there's a thing so that's your oscillator circuit again and that one. Yep. A bit of ceramics for probably supply this little supply um what do they call? Well they kept to put on a power supply and stop it. Being susceptible with the voltage spikes. Or voltage outages or whatever. Alright. It's just I don't know what are they called? You put them on power and so... Oh my brain's gone dead tonight. <sighs> you put them on power rails to stop the uh been affected by short outage spikes. Spin. They're not called isolation camps. It's going to bug me now. Recorded. Uh, rain, you failed me. Mind you looking neat ish? No, not really, but brain you fail me. Nicole. Cool. Yeah. 
Not smooth and perhaps. Getting the card surface. Uh, never mind. Almost done with this lot. Stop moving circuit board. I need to really start using my helping hands I've got lying around here somewhere. A nice sit a while back. I've seen another video. I've got one of those um, soldering trays. It works quite nicely. The uh, heat resistant foam in them. Yep. Work quite nicely for this sort of thing. Yeah. Come on. Ah, how's it looking? Nice solid in it. Yep. Resistor switch and socket. So let's get the socket in. Right around. Socket moving. Yep. Resistor. And that. Honestly, it sits in there. And the sweat for sit. Yeah. Sweet. Put that there. And I'll stop the switch falling out. Oh. Oh. <sighs> right. That's cool. Let's hmm. see Sold that in a bit early. It's just been over here. Put in place. No, glass is flying off. Oh, 
Come on that side. Uh -huh. So now the bins will pop it in. I'm still not happy with that joint. Nice. Zip. Cool. I don't know the use of this white poster, I don't know how interested that is. Let's just straighten the legs up a little bit. She goes through the loop. Stand up, stand up. You might need our happy Gilmore on you. If you remember that thing. Second so yeah. Yeah, my best friend. I almost fell through. Let's try that one again. Let's go that way. Yeah, I think this I'll sort that out later. All right. What we've got is, last but not least, 
No. I have two bent LEDs of each color. Right, so I need to make sure that which is the short one, is beside the flat. So green is bottom. Look at this there. Look at the top. Yep. Short and at the top here. Short at the top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First, moving on. Just down there. So you now have well these hopefully go both red both but it's a perfect going that way. Yes. Please stop touching stuff that's just been sold. All right, now this is going to be fun. Let's see. That one's there. That one's... That's a signal coming in. That one. Oh, that one's been fun to sort. Mm -hmm. Durable, I think. Very tight. Right, so that is the bottom one's there, so there's short that way. And short that one. Right. Okay. Set it up. Sorted. Have all these LEDs working, or are they going to be all over them? If I put them all around, it's going to be a short video on troubleshooting stuff up to our soldering circuitry. Right. Okay. Now, 
Who wants that one? Oh, they're sitting there, right? No, they're always going to put that in there. The short ones. That way? Put one of these that way. Right. Not a circuit, how to solve that with not destroying the LED plastic. Um. Okay, that was relatively painless. Let's do the other side. Right. Okay, so they're all right. A um, little bit of scorching, but nothing I'm unhappy with. One left. Go that one went right. Alright, not slight. We're done. So, I don't have a 9 volt battery. Turn that fan off. Turn the soldering iron off. Get my power supply to 9 volts. There we go. Yeah. Positive to positive, negative to negative. That's, that's a very good connection. Let's turn the lights off. You can actually see the LEDs. Let's turn that on. Let's turn that on. Okay, so that's in first state. Let's crank the. Oh, there you go. Let's turn orange. Let's crank the time. Red. Bit slower or faster. Way through. There you go. Green. Yeah. And hopefully that one then should go orange. Yeah, they should go both go red. That one should go green. Cool. That is working quite well. I like that. So there you go, guys. A well, working in double quotes, traffic light. That is quite neat. That's very clear, and the fact that it's all just implemented in a counter and some diode logic, diode based logic. Cool. Well, um, watch your eyes, lights, light going back on. Yep, there we go. Turn that off before I So, what are they using? What's it using? 12 milliamps. So, a 9 volt battery running 12 milliamps should take. Last quite a while. There. Cool. There you go, guys. One traffic light set. Hope you found that enjoyable. Um, like and subscribe on YouTube. I'm on Twitch where I stream some games I do. And um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any other suggestions or anything else you'd like to see. Um, please just leave it in the comments below. And I'll uh, catch you next time. Bye.